Hi guys, this is Radio from the Inquisition of Gaming and this is my first look and review of uh, the dimension aspect of the new Rift expansion Storm Legion. Um, so you can see I'm currently standing in a rather boring little chapel thing. I'll walk outside it and we'll have a quick look at it. So this is the default chapel that you get at the beginning um, as a defiant and you can see that the area it's not all that large. You can see that you have a bit of greenery to build on over here but you kind of have invisible walls that are quite nearby. The good thing is you can upgrade your dimensions or buy new ones for about 50 plat or so which is very easily um, easy to make. But the main thing about dimensions is making your own stuff so I'll show you what I've made so far. So this is my little reading library. You can see I've decorated the outside with some nice shrubs. The uh, trees themselves are just trees I suppose. Some of the building work is made using individual blocks that I've fitted together. So you can see those stairs, they took me ages and were made from wooden planks. Whereas there are other items like this rather nice looking candlelit shrine, which are sold as complete items and you can just kind of plonk them in your world and they'll probably look good wherever you put them. Um, there are other things you can get as well, like urns, amphoras, chest of drawers. Those chest of drawers are made um, and are sold as they are, same with the bookcase. Uh, that funny looking shard thing there, I found, I think I got it as a drop from a mob and that's a really cool aspect of it actually, is that you can get um, items dropped from mobs as well as just buying them from vendors. You've got to kind of look out for whether they are a dimensional item or not though, because if you don't then you're not going to be able to, then you might accidentally sell them as junk. Um, you can also get them from professions, so for example this red chair I made using my alchemy profession I think. I can also make a potion master's cabinet but I haven't made it yet because I don't have the mats. I have to do that at some point. So what I'm going to do now is I'm very quickly going to show you how to place items. I'm not going to tell you how to make them look good because I'm sure you guys are capable of doing that. So the first thing you do when you enter your dimension is you gain a new toolbar up here. And the first thing you do is you click into edit mode. While in edit mode you can press B to open your bags and then you can drag and drop items from your um, inventory that are dimension items so you can see these are all labelled as dimension items and you can probably tell that I'm kind of addicted to dimensions already. I've dropped so many golds on this already. Um, so I'm gonna grab a pink urn and we're gonna place this in my library. So the first kind of mode you start placing things in is free placement mode where you can kind of put it anywhere and it'll try and adjust to the level of the terrain that it's sitting on. So if it's sitting on a plank it'll try and sit uh, properly on the plank. So you click to put it down and then you get these options here which let you move the item in the X, Y and Z axis. So if you just drag one you can move it along one plane like that and then you can move it in the other two as well. You can end up leaving things in midair and they won't do anything, they won't stop you from doing that. Things won't fall onto the ground like they would w in Minecraft if you tried to place a sand block in the air, so they will just let you stick things in the air if you want to. And I've heard that some people are making really crazy jumping puzzles, which I might have to have a go at eventually. The next mode you come into is the rotation mode. Again, lets you rotate um, on the three axes. Let's just leave it like that because I think that's quite a nice pattern and it matches the one on my chair so we'll leave it like that. Next up you can make things bigger or smaller using the scale bit. I think it looks a bit silly being that big so we'll shrink it down a bit so that it's not clipping into my metal pole there. You can um, have things clipping into each other. They don't exactly have physics as such but once you put them down they are solid and you can edit things while you are standing on them if you like so you can boost yourself up to the sky if you want to do that for some reason so once you've decided on a size you can then go into free placement mode again I'm just gonna stick it there because I think that looks good there and uh, then the final option is to pick up things and put them back into your bag so let's just stick something else out as well just to make that look a bit better We'll make that a bit smaller as well. So you can kind of group items up to make them look really cool. So I quite like the way I put all of these urns together at the front because it makes things look a bit more...
cluttered, I suppose, and I quite like the idea of things being lived in and cluttered, and you can see how much effort the has gone into creating the dimensions. So that was a quick look at how to place things. Next up, what we're going to look at is other people's dimensions. So let's exit edit mode. And if you click on the social tab and then click on dimensions, you first of all see your own and you can edit permissions. So if you want uh, your guildmates to be able to move, pick up or place things, I personally don't because mine are funny and they would make giant inappropriate statues. Um, you can let either your friends, the guild or your public friend, uh, just random people that will enter your dimension, just be able to edit it if you want to. As I said, personally, not a fan of that. Uh, next thing you can look at is the alts tab. So if you had alts with dimensions, you can see their dimensions there, which means you can have as many dimensions as you have alts, which is a cool feature. Next up is friends. So you can see uh, my mutual friend Gravecrawler has his own version of this area here, which is called Warden's Point. And you can see that he's got two pluses to it. So two people have gone in there and said, yeah, this is a cool dimension. Um, this would be the tab where I would see a guild dimension. Guild dimensions are run by guilds and they're just a dimension, a larger dimension for a whole guild to edit if you're allowed to. Guildmates, you can see your guildmates with dimensions. So we've got Matoya and Gravecrawler who have both got their dimensions. And then finally, you can see the top weekly and top pub uh, of all time uh, dimensions of the week or all time so we've got Alicia at the top and then we've got me second on uh, both weekly and all time but it's it's not been long yet but uh, if you want to visit my dimension and upvote it I would be a big fan of that I'm Seredio on Blood Iron at the moment so if you want to visit and give me a thumbs up that would be much appreciated. I had a couple people visit while I was still making things yesterday and I don't think they were terribly impressed because there wasn't much to look at but there is a bit more to look at now and I've got a whole little library thing going on so hopefully it'll get upvoted a bit more. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go and have a look at my friend Matoya's dimension. His is on the same basic area as mine so it's Warden's Point again. You can see that he hasn't got a uh, a little library thing going on here but he has instead got some really really cool lamp posts and then over here he's got a little open air study area so he's got some nice torches some cool bits over here and then he's i think they're beehives there and a scarecrow which scared me the first time i came in here right so what we're going to do next is we're going to go to another dimension which is a slightly larger one uh, let's go to Dearest's one because that one's a really cool one. This is a larger one with a few different options and a lot more space. So we've got the same basic chapel again which you can't move and then you've got a nice little building that's been made by this player. You can see that he's decorated it with some nice sun things, a nice table to sit at and uh, a really nice bed actually, I must get myself one of these, and a ramp up to the second layer where he has a nice deck. Uh, his is a lot bigger, as you can see the walls don't kick in for a bit longer and he's got more building space to use. Next up we're going to have a look at Elysium Guild's um, area, which is in Stonefield and it's kind of in the little first proper town that you get to in Stonefield. I don't know why they chose Stonefield, as it's kind of a really dark, enclosing area, but I suppose that might help. So there's the first bit of the wall, visible wall. They get some free tavern areas. And this is a really big space. You can see that you've got all the way around here. All of the waterfall behind the tavern. And up until those houses over there, I think you can build anywhere in this bit. You can just imagine that you'd have um, an officers area where you'd only be able to have officers in it and things like that in the guild dimension. So I think that's a really cool aspect of it. Finally, we're going to have a look at Feyen's Retreat, which is owned by this person called Fadi, I think. And this is a really cool one as well. You pay increasing amounts of plat for each bigger dimension that you want. I believe that this one, Feyen's Retreat, costs 50 plat. You can see you get a nice mud hut kind of house thing going on, which is bigger than the chapel that you have in the first two. 
Guild Dimensions cost 1,000 plat, which is quite expensive, but it's worth it for the amount of space you get. So, Faeon's Retreat, you get a swimming pool, and an island, and a little house, and you can see again, it's a bit bigger. So, let's go back, finally, to my one. Oh, there's also a random button, if you just want to go to any random dimension and see what someone's made in there. So... I'd say the good points about dimensions are that you can be very creative with a limited amount of space. If you don't have enough, although you are kind of limited on the amount of things you can put in, but you can increase that limit. So you can see I've used 72 of 90 of the items that I'm allowed to put down. And you can just click there to upgrade for increasing amounts of plat. So the good things is that once you get used to it I would say that the building the way that you build and the way that you place the items is intuitive once you get used to it so you just have to get used to it and then it'll be very easy to do um, your stuff the bad point is that it's horribly addictive and you can uh, spend hours and hours and hours trying to perfect your dimension um, and it's not like someone will come in and ruin it or anything but then you'll think wow maybe I could have been leveling up you'll notice I'm still level 50 because I spent the entirety of last night making this little library thing so I did kind of regret it after that and I thought to myself well maybe I should have been leveling seeing the new content but I suppose it just adds another option and another way to play the game and another aspect to enjoy of Rift and Tryon are very enthusiastic about expanding the dimensions offering new items new dimensions themselves and offering like raid trophies from raid bosses and things like that which i love the idea of if i could get a massive head of a boss like krush's head i don't know stuck to the side of my guild tavern that would just be the best thing ever wouldn't it anyway this has been seredio from the inquisition of gaming i hope that you've enjoyed this review of dimensions on rift if you want to see anything in particular, either message me on my character, Seredio of Blood Iron, or you can alternatively just leave a comment on the channel or this video, and I will try to show you some of the other new aspects of Storm Legion. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.